when you were at Tesla and, and looking at and developing relationships with all these global mining companies uh, as Tesla was scaling and looking for suppliers, like what were some of the the key issues that you noticed in, in from a market perspective, and then ultimately what sort of led to to Tesla pursuing sort of like further vertical integration? Yeah, I think the incentive misalignment piece that between the industries and between kind of like a commodity industry or the mining industry and kind of the manufacturing industry was mm. was the big misalignment that existed between the industries. The, you know, the degree to which automation was absent was pretty interesting. There's a there's a long period of time where mines make no money, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, you know, a lot of capital goes into the exploration phase, it goes into the development phase. What a lot of people don't realize is that when you start the mine, there's actually sometimes like years where you are just getting through the waste to get or drilling a shaft mm -hmm. to get to the ore deposit. And so any additional capital intensity like associated with automation kind of oftentimes gets the capital starts to get tired. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that additional um, automation equipment kind of falls by the wayside. And if you have the people there that can drive the trucks or drive the excavators or run the run the drill rigs, like you'll take that. And we're at this interesting inflection point now where those people are less and less available. Um, you know, the mm -hmm. mining industry has kind of been taking it on the on the head for a long time. It's not been a sexy industry that everyone wants to go into. Mm -hmm. um, and so the labor pool is contracting, it's shrinking, and it's both the trades and it's the engineering skill sets. And that that, you know, the first things that mining companies say now is that the the labor pool is one of the biggest challenges that they're trying to solve for. 